China's NEVs go global. How a $1.75 billion EV empire not only survived a global trade war, but thrived. Let's dive in. A $75 billion electric vehicle empire built out of nothing survives. A massive trade war dodges tariffs like a ninja in a storm and doesn't just survive, it thrives. Meanwhile, the West is left scrambling, trying to catch up. China's new energy vehicles, or NEVs, are taking over the global automotive market. We're talking domination. Over 50% of the electric cars you see on the planet today? Yep, they were made in China. And this isn't some random statistic this is happening in real time. So, what's their secret? How did they pull this off? Stick around, because this story is wilder than you think, and it's rewriting the future of transportation as we speak. From Beijing to Berlin, China's NEVs are everywhere. You can't escape them. But here's the wild part. Even as the US, EU, and Canada slam down massive tariffs up, to 100% China is still winning. How? How are they doing it? We're gonna break this down and uncover the secrets of how they pulled it off. Trust me, this is just the beginning. Let's go back to 2009. China didn't just wake up one day and say, hey, let's make some electric cars. No, they saw the future. The world was shifting. Gas guzzling, smoke belching cars were on their way out. Electric was in, and the Chinese government jumped in head first. They didn't just dabble, they bet big on electric vehicles. Over the next decade, China invested a jaw-dropping $230 billion into NEVs. That's billions in subsidies, R&D, battery tech, and everything else needed to build a thriving electric car ecosystem. Battery electric cars, plug-in hybrids, everything that powers this revolution. Fast forward to 2023, and China is now the world's largest EV market. More than half of the world's electric cars are on Chinese roads. Companies like BYD, NIO, and Xpeng aren't just building vehicles, they're building empires. They're going global. Last year alone, China exported 1.2 million NEVs. That's a 60% jump from 2022. This isn't just a trend, it's dominance. But here's the kicker. It's not just about the numbers, these cars are good. No, seriously really good. Take BYD Seagull, for example. It's a $10,000 electric vehicle, and it's packed with tech, performance, and style. It's cute, zippy, and ready to take on the world. Meanwhile, Western automakers like Ford and GM, they're sweating bullets. China's NEVs aren't just cheap, they're innovative. With superior battery tech, smarter designs, and that $75 billion valuation, they're building more than just cars, they're building the future. But how did they scale so fast? It all comes down to industrial policy. The Chinese government didn't just sit back and hope this worked out. No, they took action. They gave massive subsidies, built charging networks, and made sure they secured all the raw materials needed for EVs like lithium, cobalt, and nickel. While the West debated climate goals and lagged behind, China acted, they executed, they were laser-focused. By 2025, China's NEV sales will make up 51% of all vehicle sales in the country way, ahead of their 45% target for 2027. This isn't an accident. This is strategy. Now, let's talk about the real drama here. The West? They didn't just sit idly by, China surged ahead. In 2024, the US raised tariffs on Chinese EVs from 25% to a massive 102.5%. The EU followed with tariffs up to 45%. And Canada? They matched the US with a 100% tariff wall. The West said, Hey, we can't let China flood our markets with cheap cars and ruin our auto industries. This is unfair. Fair enough, right? But China didn't blink. They didn't back down. They had a playbook. First, they went around the tariffs. Mexico became their back door. Why Mexico? Because of the U.S.-Mexico-Canada agreement, which allows cars assembled in Mexico to enter the U.S. with just a 2.5% tariff or none at all, if they meet specific rules. So, Chinese automakers like BYD set up plants in Mexico. And guess what? In 2024, Mexico's EV imports from China doubled. Cities like Monterrey are now buzzing with Chinese factories. So, instead of fighting the tariffs head-on, China found a clever workaround. They didn't just survive, they adapted. Second, China diversified its markets. 
When the EU slapped tariffs, China didn't just double down there. Number. They pivoted. They looked at emerging markets, Southeast Asia, Latin America, Africa, and guess what? Exports exploded. In 2023, the EU and UK took 40% of China's EV exports, down from 75% in 2021. Now Thailand, Brazil, and even parts of Africa are becoming new hotspots for Chinese NEVs. And third, China didn't just sit on its laurels. They kept innovating. While tariffs might slow you down for a bit, they didn't stop China. Companies like Huawei dove into EV tech, integrating AI and 5G into their cars. SMIC, China's chip giant, ramped up production, even under heavy US sanctions. They weren't going to be dependent on anyone else. By 2025, China's battery tech like sodium ion Celsius, driving prices lower and cutting costs even more. Tariffs? They're just speed bumps, not roadblocks. But wait, there's more. China didn't just play defense, they hit back hard. When the EU imposed tariffs on Chinese EVs in 2024, China launched anti-dumping probes on European pork and brandy. They found preliminary evidence for up to 39% duties. And what did they do? They held off on imposing them. But the message was clear. Mess with us. And your farmers are going to lose billions. The US didn't escape either. China tightened exports of rare earth materials, which are critical for EV batteries. Suddenly, tech companies and defense contractors were in a panic. China wasn't afraid to make its move. Then came the WTO. China filed complaints against the US and EU, arguing that their tariffs violated trade rules. And get this, the US didn't even bother filing a WTO case. Why? Because it's not so easy when the shoe is on the other foot. Pretty ironic, given how often the US has accused China of bending the rules. By 2025, these legal battles are heating up. But China's not waiting. They're building alliances. The Belt and Road Initiative is expanding, and they're locking in markets with tariff-free deals all around the world. So, how did China turn tariffs into fuel? It all comes down to adaptation. Mexico became their backdoor to North America. Emerging markets ate up their EVs. Innovation kept them ahead. Retaliation bought them time. By March 2025, global EV sales were hitting 1.2 million in February alone. Even with EU tariffs biting, BYD's market share grew exponentially. But here's the kicker. It's not just about beating tariffs. China's redefining the game. Their NEVs now represent 70% of global production. Even companies like Xiaomi, yes, the phone company, are jumping into the EV game with their new SU7, blending high-end tech and style. NIO's battery swapping stations are popping up from Oslo to Jakarta. And Huawei, their self-driving tech, is making Tesla's autopilot look dated. What's next? China's eyeing 6G for even smarter cars. They're doubling down on green tech solar-powered EVs, anyone? And they're making big bets on quantum computing for next-gen batteries. Meanwhile, the West? They're stuck debating tariffs while China's busy building the future. By 2030, analysts predict China could control 80% of the global EV market. This is no longer just a win. For Chennai, it's a wake-up call for the entire world. So, there you have it. How China's $75 billion NEV empire didn't just survive the trade war, it turned it into rocket fuel for global domination. Pretty epic, right? If you enjoyed this, give it a thumbs up. What do you think? Can the West catch up? Or is China completely unstoppable? Drop your thoughts below. What video do you want to watch next? Tell me in the comments. If you're into tech takeovers, check out my video on Huawei's 6G revolution. Links are on the screen. Or dive into SMIC's chip comeback. Hit subscribe if you're not already in the crew, and I'll see you in the next one. Stay charged.